Cheers and welcome to another studio vlog. I hope you all are doing well. I am doing well. I've been having a good week so far, getting back into the swing of things after a lovely week off for vacation last week. I am up at Adam already today. It's about 9.30. I'm about to check into work and I already had a lovely stitch and chat Zoom with my Patreon peeps. Um, and I've had a couple of cups of coffee. I'm gonna make some tea here in a little bit, some iced tea for the day, probably Earl Grey, classic Earl Grey. And I've been knitting this morning too, or rather tinking. I made a mistake with the lace on my lace cuff on my second sleeve. I have finished the first sleeve and I'm so happy with it, so happy with the length. And I eagerly put on the next sleeve right away and knit uh, I what worked out to be 40 rounds of stockinette um, before I started the lace cuff. And then I did the lace cuff last night. I think I added an extra yarn over and that was what was happening, but I tinked back a little bit. And then I, I just, I couldn't figure out where the mistake was. So while I was on the Zoom chat, I decided just to do a good old knit together. <laughs> And, and as I was saying, as my Grammy says, just walk fast. <laughs> Nobody will see it. Plus it's uh, right underneath the arm um, on that kind of line or seam or beginning of the round. So nobody's really ever going to see it. So I did a couple of rounds after doing that little quick fix and um, it looks fine. It looks great. And I'm back on track with it. So throughout today in between breaks on work, I'm going to try to finish that up and hopefully finish the cardigan today. We'll see. I'm so excited. It'll definitely be in the next couple of days. I just have to weave in some more ends and do a proper blocking. I think I'm gonna steam block it. Um, that's what I've done before in the past for linen garments. Um, but I might quasi wet block it. We'll see, I'm gonna look up some different techniques again and kind of re-educate myself. I was so lucky for my previous linen garment. I did a sweater and I was, I, this was a couple of years ago, three years ago now, I think. And I was able to take, utilize our, um, big gigantic steamer at the opera. I had, uh, I got special access to it from one of my friends who used to work in the costume shop there. Um, and it was so much fun to <laughs> do. I felt so cheeky doing it. Um, but alas, I don't have access to that now for several reasons. So I'll have to figure out a new method um, that I wanna do for blocking and getting this all finished so I can take photos. But I'm gonna get to work and get to it and I'll check in with you all a little bit later. There's a lot to do this week. kind of sort of <laughs> I just need to weave in the ends and give it a proper blocking I pretty much am sure I'm gonna soak it I put a shout out on Instagram when I posted my finished sleeve this morning asking and I've gotten some feedback saying um, that I should go ahead and wet block it so I think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna wait though a couple of days because 
it's so smoky and it's sadly smoky a little bit here in my apartment. There's just no getting away from it, uh, from all of the wildfires. So yeah, I'll probably wait a couple of days and see, uh, what happens with the smoke here in my area, but yeah, I'm so excited, but I'm having a good day so far. I have a meeting here in a few minutes and another one later this afternoon. I, let me just sit down. Yeah, that's more comfortable. So I have a couple of meetings today and I have again kind of reassessed my to-do list and things that I'd like to accomplish and reprioritized. It's just been a week where I've needed to do that every day because yesterday, I think with the news of the fires and a few other things, I just had one of those days again where I I had forward momentum and then all of a sudden it was just like hit a wall and I know all of us are having them right now. I saw so many people post about it yesterday. So I just had to listen to it and reshuffle things. I did get some things done, um, but I really trying to be gentle with myself and my expectations and understanding that things are going to ebb and flow. It's just the way the world right now. I mean, it's a way the world all the time, but <laughs> especially right now. So one thing I did, I was like, okay, I, I, I've been wanting to clear my spaces out. Um, and just to get ready for new growth, the new season. I think it's the rush of the new school year kind of feel, all that stuff. So I went ahead and moved my big old tower of shelving uh, into my bathroom <laughs> to put it there. So it's kind of out of my space in here until I get it all together and do it um, this weekend. I finally was like, you don't have time this week. You're back at work. Um, so I'm going to do my big or reorganization this weekend, which is really excited, exciting. And <clears throat> then, uh, I was going to go take my shredding finally to Berkeley shred. Um, but then the fires hit and I just don't want to be out in smoke if I can help it. Um, so I kind of was like, okay, where can I hide all of this? <laughs> so it's out of sight, out of mind for right now, but I still have it on my list to do. So I kind of reshuffled things there and I'm feeling better. It's kind of clearing the energy to flow a little bit better. I was realizing it was kind of blocked. Um, and I'm really affected by those things. I always have been feng shui, all the, I totally believe in all of that and energy flow. And especially in a small space, having a big, tower, even if it's see-through and everything can affect, um, your focus and your creativity. So, and especially if you keep having to move it over to use the sewing machine. <laughs> so, so yes, so I'm feeling good. And there are a couple of things I want to do. Um, once this first meeting is done, I want to contact some people about some upcoming mouths, namely Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi for, uh, the pumpkin mall, I think we're going to be doing hopefully the fifth annual, which is crazy pants, pumpkin make along. And I'm excited to talk details with her about that. Get that rolling, do a couple of things for the summer garment mall, which I sadly have neglected mentioning that too much um, here on the channel. I've mentioned it over on Instagram, but we are having our summer garment mail right now. It's um, being part of the reason I haven't mentioned it too much is it is being hosted over on Ravelry. It, was, it started there before their reorganization, restructuring, rebranding. Um, and with all of the hullabaloo about the issues accessing Ravelry right now, um, you know, I just didn't feel right kind of promoting it over there. And the people who are taking part are taking part and there's so many gorgeous makes that are happening um but if you would like to take part please do you can always just take part over on instagram as well we'd love to see your makes with the hashtag summer garment 2020 whips are allowed so if you have one that's almost off the needles please go ahead and share with us um i have a few prizes that i'm excited to pull for um, and there's just one thread, just a chatter finish thread where we're just sharing all of the things. It's a lot of fun. So my apologies for not, for not, uh, sharing those details that much this summer. But again, it's one of those things where things have just been ebbing and flowing and focuses have been elsewhere. 
but and I but I've been taking part with my cardigan. I'm so excited for it. So anyway, I better get to this meeting. I think I have like two minutes. <laughs> I've been cutting it close getting to my Zoom meetings these days. Has anybody else been doing that? I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll just saunter over and log in. And sometimes there's computer issues and you have issues logging in. So I better get on that. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Finished my first meeting and I'm eating some lunch and I am doing some food prep, which I will be doing all throughout the day. It's been, food prep has been sadly going down on my priority list the last couple of weeks, few weeks. And I have so many things that I wanna make this week. So I've got some eggs boiling right now for hard boiled eggs. I think the timer's about to go off. That was spooky, <laughs> about to go off right now. So I'm gonna put those in an ice bath, let them sit for f about five minutes. I uh, will tell you how I cook them. And um, yeah, I gotta go do that right now before they overcook. <laughs> Smells so good. Good morning, it is Friday. <sighs> it is quite the day already. It's about almost nine o'clock or if not just turned nine o'clock. Been up for some time. Woke up really early again, I think to dreams and probably a little bit to the smell of smoke, finding it hard to breathe. It's another smoky, smoky day here in the Bay Area or at least here in the East Bay where I live. Um, my asthma is definitely feeling it, but it's burning off right now. It's getting a little bit better as the day goes on or this, as the sun comes up. Um, yeah, hard times here in California. I mean, hard times everywhere, but yeah, right now it's especially cray cray. We, um, my family continues to be safe. My friends are safe. I have a few that are evacuated, but they are safe and yeah, just keeping tabs, being on top to help out as need be, as I can. But today I have um, the day off actually. So no meetings, so I'm doing minimalist makeup Friday <laughs> and just kind of letting my skin breathe a little bit. And um, I've got some fun things on top. I'm gonna just spend the morning making. I'm doing a little bit on my northeasterly again, my scrappy blanket, which is nice, a kind of nice palette cleanser. And then I'm gonna be cross-stitching later today because I wanna start putting on the sequins uh, for all of my ornaments. They're at the point where they're ready for that. So I'm gonna see if I can finish them up this week by tomorrow. Um, we'll see, I'm trying not to put too much pressure given everything going on. Um, and then I've got some sewing to do to get ready for um, another 
round of new bags coming to the shop sometime next week. Um, and I'm just waiting on a few more supplies, but I have enough to kind of get started. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of sewing today, which will be nice. I haven't done that in a while, not since earlier this week. So, but yeah, I'll, I'm gonna eat this and check in with my mama for a little FaceTime and I will chat with you all later. Good afternoon. It's about 3.30. It's a slow afternoon. So I am giving in to my need to cleanse and clear my space so that I can sew some more and do some things for the shop starting this weekend. So the first thing I've been doing most of the afternoon, I have that much shredding, is shredding old paperwork. I had um, compiled and cleaned out my files and everything a few weeks ago, um, I think a few weeks or a couple weeks before vacation. And I was gonna go to Berkeley Shred, which is down, uh, south of here in Berkeley but now it's been super smoky out and I was just like I'm just gonna annoy the heck out of my neighbors and just shred all day long and get this out of my space I'm very lucky I have a uh, recycle chute um, so I can put it all down there and get it out of my space so that is what I've been doing with little breaks here and there once my little wee dusty as you will have seen um, mini shredder uh, overheats and has to cool down <laughs> but it's been kind of it's been nice I've been watching YouTube videos I've discovered some new YouTube uh, channels that I really like there's one called currently Hannah uh, she does uh, travel vlogs. she was I, I'm seriously just catching up I found her recommended in a rabbit hole of other YouTube videos but she currently is traveling solo in Japan and so she has beautiful vlogs with drone shots and um, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful filmmaker. So I've been enjoying those and chatting with my friends. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Tomorrow I'm going to, I've been thinking of an action plan for starting to reorganize this area over here. Um, because I'm at a point where I need to do a lot tomorrow and I really want to do a lot tomorrow, but I need things to be organized and put away. Namely that giant tower, shelving tower that's currently in my bathroom. <laughs> so I am going to do some more before shots and then just do my closet tomorrow and do um, a few shots here and there for later on to share her on the channel and then do a nice, lovely, after everything is done tour for you all. I'm excited for that. And um, I'm inspired to do that by lovely Sandy of Sandy by the Lake Psych. She just posted her new studio, reorganized studio tour. So I was like, that's what I'm gonna do because it was starting to feel kind of overwhelming trying to shoot it as I went. Um, that would be like a seven hour video <laughs> for you guys. So I think it, you've gotten a good idea of, of what it looked like before, what I would like to do, and then I'll do a kind of in between while I'm waiting for more furniture to be in stock in at Ikea, and then an afterward. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm just talking out loud and planning with y'all at this point. So I'm going to get back to shredding, going into my Zen YouTube video mode, and uh, Good afternoon. It is Saturday and I've had a lovely slow morning chilling out, calming down the fire anxiety, which is really real right now and really making peace with 
my making mojo kind of going poof up in smoke literally <laughs> kind of sort of <laughs> so i am focusing today on the closet affectionately known as monica's closet and first i'm going to finish up the rest of my shredding over there in that box but I thought before I get started on the closet, once I'm done shredding, I would give you a tour of where it stands right now. So I'm gonna do kind of a little bit quasi process throughout the day, just little snippets here and there. And then again, yesterday, as I was planning with you all, <laughs> I determined I'm gonna do a final, nice independent video of the final tour of once everything is done. So. But today's focus is this beauty, which is a labyrinth of small projects inside of it, which is why it gets put off a lot. So let me show you around. Here is what it looks like as of today. It was even more crammed a couple of weeks ago before I went up for vacation. I had some of mom's rolling bags that she uses for her Cricut and sewing supplies that I brought back up to her. Um, but it's still pretty darn crammed in there. This is my ironing board and iron, and I got this beautiful duster that as I um, need new household supplies, I'm really focusing on getting sustainable, low waste, zero waste options. So this is an example of I needed a duster and I invested in this beautiful one that I believe is made in Germany. I bought it off of Wild Minimalist, which I'll leave a link down below. And it's gorgeous and works really, really well. And you can um, hand wash the, the brush right here, the duster. And then we have the closet. So these boxes are gonna stay as is. They're full of sewing projects and fabrics that I'll sort through at another time. Um, I do wanna utilize this space in a different way, but for today, it's gonna stay as is. The focus is getting all of this clown car out of the closet and taking a look at what I have. Um, the majority of it is all fabric. Of course, you can see that right here or scraps of interfacing, which I'm keeping for Notions bags, which will be coming to the shop next Sunday. Stay tuned. And um, the boxes down here are full of scraps and fabric. I've got emergency supplies <laughs> conveniently and smartly down where I would have to take other things out in order to access them. I've got my commute bag that is like a time capsule from March, which is crazy. It'll be nuts to look inside there. I've got a random cricket mat that I need to give back to my mom. And I've got something that I need to put under my bed because I have space now again for that. And um, this is like a wreath door hang for during Christmas time and something for my car that I don't use anymore that, um, I probably will see if my mom or sister want, or I will uh, see if any of my friends want it. Um, and then back here, it's just, oh, another commuter bag. That'll be interesting. And there's like a step ladder and dolly back there. But for the most part, it's scraps and fabric that just need to be organized and sifted through. So... There we have it. So I'm going to finish shredding and then get to this puppy right here. I can't wait to dive in.
phase one is complete and I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling so relieved and like a weight has been lifted in a way. Just kind of knowing where all of the scraps that weren't in an orderly place where they are now. So let me give you a quick tour. I'll be more thorough in the final eventual tour, but I wanted to just kind of show you what I've done so far. So these bolts are just hanging here for now. I will show you the mountain of interfacing that I have that I'm gonna have to cram in here in the interim. These will be filled eventually with some things that I have in my table drawers, like zippers and things like that. I wanna organize them by length so that I can see them clearly. But in this tray I have, um, let's see, I've got larger pieces of fabric, so one or more yards. I've got all of these in here. You will have seen the mountainous stack that I was compiling. These are the little windows that were left over from the previous needlework bags that I used to make with a vinyl window. Um, so this is what would be left over once I cut that window out and I saved them all these all this time um, because I want to make patchwork oh, as, it, as it falls. I want to make, I'll just grab another one here so you can see, so I can make um, patchwork bags of some kind of design. So I saved the lining too, just in case, but yeah, I've got fabric, I've got little squares of these from all of, pretty much all of the fabrics that I've used in the almost two years that I've had the shop open, so pretty cool. The next tray, I've got little scraps of linen or fabric that I used on bottoms of bags or handles. For the most part, I use Essex linen. And in this one, I've got uh, scraps of, this is one of two trays, I believe, scraps of uh, fabrics that I've used over time. So you can kind of have a little memory lane here. It's been really trippy to go through all these fabrics again. And this is a larger, so I've got some of these larger baskets. This is a storage um, thing my mom has had for gosh, 12 something years. She had this in some of, in one of her previous homes and it was her kind of dresser drawer. She didn't have room for a dresser drawer. She was in a condo in San Francisco. So yeah, I've got tons of little fabrics here. And then, ooh, I've got, this is white um, scraps of white, cotton that I use for lining for the majority of my bags. Oh, it's kind of stiffed. And then under here, these are, you will have recognized these were recent bags. So I've got scraps here and some bags that I'm gonna make, but they're not large enough scraps for me to make the bags that I make now. And underneath are other color, non-white um, lining scraps that I've had, so. Yeah, it is a an amazing start. And I've got bolts up here that I'm using still. So yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, so I need to cram these back in the closet. So they'll just have to live there for now. And then as I work my way through making scrappy bags, um, you know, or I decide like the pieces are too small, I'll figure out where to um, recycle them or what to do with them, the interfacing rather. And yeah, but I've been doing this all in between shredding. Um, so whenever my shredder overheats and needs to cool down, that's when I would stand up and do all of this. So it's been a back and forth process and I still have a little bit more to shred. So I'm gonna keep doing that right now because I'm, I'm on a roll, man. I am feeling so refreshed and refocused. I should have done this a long time ago, but the timing was right 
it worked out because I needed this feeling right now. I am calling it for today. I still have a little bit of shredding to do. I've probably got a couple more hours just factoring in the time for my shredder to cool down <laughs> between uses. But I've gotten everything else out of the house, all of the recycling, all of the trash, all of the things, little bits and pieces, put back into new homes under my bed or I put like the emergency water in one of my little in that little cabinet right there <laughs> that was smashed full of scraps and I'm feeling the creativity flowing again I feel a renewed excitement about new bags in the shop and the ones that I will be making next week um, for Sunday's kind of update um, and I've got a couple more ideas that I want to do. I've got personal make my film, my personal making mojo coming back after it kind of flittering here and there. I think that happens too when you finish a big project as well. Um, I don't know about you. It does for me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to blocking when the smoke, you know, subsides a little bit. I'm hoping and praying it does soon. Um, I really want to make something with my Hocus Pocus yarn that I bought about five years ago <laughs> by Legacy Fiber Arts. I think it was like their first line of yarn and I have a pattern picked out. I was running it by my Patreon uh, peeps this morning on the Stitch and Chat and they are totally down for it. I have all of the yardage that I need. I double checked the pattern. So I'm going to be making, I think it's called the Peacock Shawl. I'll put the details down here and show you a picture. Um, so I'm going to be casting that on. Of course, I've got whips, but who wants to do whips when you can cast on a Halloween-y, witchy, over, oversized schlanket, <laughs> shawl plus blanket. <laughs> so yeah, it's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really good. So I'm going to leave it here for this vlog on a high note, stitching the high notes, which reminds me, I was talking about this the other day with some folks um, that I, you know, with my singing, taking new shapes and that singing life journey kind of coming to an end or finding a new life, um, Stitching the High Notes, the name is has been changing meaning. And it started out as a way to describe that I'm a singer, that I'm a musician, which I still am, will always be, um, and that I'm stitching at rehearsals and knitting and finding creativity in all different ways. It still means that, but it's definitely become more so in recent years um, a way of symbolizing that you should always be finding joy and looking for the high notes in life to stitch them into your life. Um, and that's something that I was taught that I truly believe and that I hope that I can inspire you all to do as well in your daily lives. So I just thought I'm kind of starting to define it in that way. And it's, really exciting. Um, and it's something that I think we all need to be mindful of, especially right now in these hard times. I started over on Instagram a couple of days ago doing daily gratitude posts. So if you're interested in joining that journey over there, um, please come on by. I'm doing a making related post every morning and a daily gratitude post every evening of three things. And sometimes I'll have a lot to say. Sometimes I'll just be like, you know, I'm grateful for plants, air, and hugs, and that's it or something. <laughs> so I think it's been helping me a lot. I hope it is inspiring to you all too. And it's just very grounding. And I think it's a practice that I need right now and perhaps we all need right now too. So again, on that note, I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you all are doing well, that you are staying safe, and I'm wishing you all the best, and I will see you next week. Bye.